Morning everybody. Once upon a time there was a young boy who lived with his parents in the country on a small farm. They kept a cow, a few pigs and some chickens. At that time the country was ruled by a cruel tyrant. That ruler banned music believing that it would stir up revolution in the country. This was a cause of great sorrow for that young boy because music was the love of his life. One day, while he was feeding the pigs, a stranger came by and they got talking. The young boy told him about his love of music. One day, said the stranger, you will hear music that will make your heart sing. The years went by, the boy became a man, but still the old ruler lived on and no music was heard in the land. But he held on to that promise of music returning. He grew old but his love of music never left him. At last, news reached his village that the old ruler was dead. The stranger returned and said, come with me. So he took him to the city, to a beautiful concert hall, all gold and red. And onto the stage came musicians with their gleaming instruments. A great hush descended. Then the orchestra began to play and tears of joy streamed down that man's face. An imaginary story of promise fulfilled leads to our New Testament reading. Israel is in a parlous state. She is led by a tyrant king, Herod, a puppet ruler under the mighty Roman Empire. No prophecy, no word of God had been heard in the land for many years. Had God abandoned his people? But hope was not entirely extinguished. The memory of God's ancient promises of a future leader, the Messiah who would set his people free, remained alive in some hearts. Simeon and Anna were amongst those who kept hope alive. Simeon is described as righteous and devout, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. He was looking forward to the consolation of Israel, a lovely phrase meaning that he was waiting for God to come and comfort his people. Anna was 84 years old and was also deeply devoted to God. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting night and day. She too was looking forward to the redemption of Israel. You couldn't ask for truer Israelites to witness the events which were about to take place. The scene is the temple in Jerusalem, God's dwelling upon earth, the heart of the nation. A man and his young wife enter the temple with their firstborn son. They too are devout, determined to fulfil every word of the Old Testament law. Mary will go through a ceremony of cleansing after childbirth and Jesus, their son, will be dedicated to the Lord and a sacrifice made, two pigeons, the offering suitable for a poor family. Simeon must have seen many such families do this, but this baby was different. We read, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. In Jesus, Samian sees God's salvation. The long wait is over. Malachi chapter 3 and a host of Old Testament promises have come true. God has come to his temple. Jesus' coming will bring glory for Israel, for she is the promise bearer. For the world will come light, God's light, to lead them out of darkness into his marvellous light. In Jesus, God has fulfilled his promises. All that the Old Testament looks forward to finds its answers in this child. He is the promise fulfiller, the Messiah, our hope, 
and our salvation. As one of my favourite verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 puts it, all the promises of God find their yes in him. And in the presence of this child, Simeon is filled with peace and Anna cannot contain her joy. The story of the birth of Jesus ends here and the focus shifts on to his ministry, his death and his resurrection. But let's pause for a moment. The angels, the shepherds, the wise men and lastly Anna and Simeon all testify to the fulfilment of God's promises in Jesus. This birth is the pivot of history, the start of the greatest story ever lived. The ancient music of the prophets, long silent, has burst forth again, fresh and exciting, full of new melodies and harmonies. As Simeon tells Mary, many will shut their ears and refuse to listen. Others will seek to silence the music, bringing unspeakable pain to Jesus and indescribable sorrow to Mary herself. But nothing, nothing could silence the music then and nothing can silence it now. The music goes on and will continue until the day when it reaches its climax, as we read in the book of Revelation. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>